an ML engineer has a lot of things to take care of when they're looking to release an ML model to production. Hi, I'm Shubhi Jain and I'm a machine learning engineer at SurveyMonkey. In this video, I'm going to be talking about going beyond an ML model. This is important because after an ML model is created from a data scientist or otherwise, there are a lot of steps that an ML engineer needs to take before this ML model can really be used and leveraged by the consumers. In this diagram over here, we have an ML model that's in the center of all these components. And you can see that there are a lot of them in comparison to just the single ML model. And while I haven't really delved into the intricacies of this ML model itself, we can see very easily that an ML engineer has a lot of things to take care of when they're looking to release an ML model to production. When an ML model runs, there are a couple of requirements that you have to think about. One is, is this ML model going to be used real time or something that runs you know, in the background that takes a few hours and the user ends up seeing it later on? And around this ML model, we have things like data wrangling, storage, the API that sits on top of the model, a UI that might be leveraging the model, visualizations of the model results themselves, security of the data input and data output of the model, logging and monitoring to make sure that the model is staying relatively consistent and accurate, and lastly, storage of the model of where it's being stored and where the results themselves are being stored. I want to talk first about data wrangling. Within data wrangling, there are a lot of different transformations that have to take place within the prediction pipeline of an ML model. So even though you might have applied some feature transformations like one hot encoding to your training data, when training your model, you have to make sure that those exact same feature transformations take place when you're predicting using your model. And sometimes the data is coming from different sources where your training data comes from one source and your prediction data comes from another source. Second, I want to talk about storage. It's really important to understand how your model is going to be stored when it's being used within your prediction pipeline. For example, if you're containerizing your ML model, sometimes there are storage limits on how large your model can really get. And I've dealt with models that take up several gigabytes in storage. And in those cases, we have to work from an engineering perspective to cut down the storage of the model while making sure that it remains performant. Next, I want to talk about the API. Oftentimes, we like to use or think about our machine learning models to be used in real time. And in order to do that, we might build an API that has a certain, certain input, calls the model, and then returns a certain output. But in a lot of cases, we might have to deal with a bulk API where thousands of predictions have to be made in real time, or millions of predictions have to be made overnight. And that's where your API design really needs to fit well with your machine learning model. Closely related is scheduling. Scheduling is related more to when you might want to train or retrain your model. As time goes on, your ML model becomes less performant as your training data might actually change. And so you might want to determine, when am I going to reschedule this machine learning model? Is it going to be done on a time series based, or is it going to be done when the model performance, which can be measured day over day, decreases over time. Next, I'm also really concerned about logging and monitoring. This is what really lets me know how well my machine learning model is doing in production when it's being used by the users of my product. And if I don't have a proper logging pipeline or monitoring pipeline to view how well my ML model is performing, we won't know at what day or time or what really causes this ML model to become less performant. Next, I want to talk about security. And this is because in today's day and age, with all the new government regulations regarding data security, it's also really important to be aware of ML model security because you don't want the ML model that you're creating to be creating any risks for the, your product or your users as well. And this could be in terms of data input and data sanity checks, but also in terms of data output or telling the user something that they probably shouldn't be hearing about. Next, I want to talk about visualizations and closely related UI, which is I need to be able to showcase the results of my model. Sometimes that's through some sort of graph that users might see, but sometimes the model is only one input into a larger diagram that the user is seeing. And you might work with a design engineer in order to 
work on creating a model that fits that UI or visualization that they have in mind. As you can tell, all these different components require you to work with a lot of different people from different backgrounds. Software engineers, data scientists, data engineers, UI and UX people. And so as an ML engineer, you're really the glue that allows this machine learning model to grow and be used and utilized by your product and by your users. That's all for today. If you like this video, please give us a like below. And as always, comment below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.